de enero de 2011, 7 y 30 de la noche. Uy, la mía se está girando, por Dios, señor, mira. Y está dando vueltas. Este avistamiento en el cielo inquietó a los vecinos de la cuadra 6 del Girón Guari en Barrios Altos. Nadie se explicaba su procedencia. Yo me mira. Voy a hacer con más. Con dos cámaras de video caseras, los vecinos alarmados captaron desde distintos ángulos los movimientos oscilantes e intermitentes de lo que sería un objeto extraño. Según sus testimonios, las vistas duraron cerca de 30 minutos hasta que la luz desapareció. Todo ocurrió este martes. Julia Gutiérrez fue quien captó estas imágenes y aún no sale de su asombro. Está convencida que lo que vio no era un avión ni un helicóptero. ¿Qué han pensado con todo esto, señora? No, es que son ovnis, inevitablemente yo creo que hay que ser muy, muy, o sea, muy escaso como para no darse cuenta de... Afirma que no es la primera vez que se observan lo que calificó como extraños fenómenos en barrios altos, pero que recién en esta oportunidad pudo captarlos en video. Pero, sí, siempre acá en el cielo se ven esas cosas, luces, o sea, se ven, este, digamos, naves que están ahí estáticas, brillando y después desaparecen ya. Sus familiares también han quedado consternados tras ver las imágenes. Hasta los vecinos más escépticos han quedado boquiabiertos. Para este especialista en ufología, se trataría del primer avistamiento del año de un ovni en Lima. Es un ovni, definitivamente. Lo que habría que corroborar, eso sí siempre digo cuando aparece uno de estos objetos extraños, es corroborar con el aeropuerto Jorge Chávez si a esa hora que fue filmado el objeto, casi 30 minutos, eh, hubo algún contacto de un eco de radar no identificado. to the White House, but it's overcast and not safe today here in Washington for a helicopter delivery of the president. The one suspects that he is going to be meeting さんっていう方が、お友達と一緒。あれ、あれ、あれが、UFO の下からオレンジ色の光を出し、その場にとどまり続ける。大きさはおよそ 40 years ago, Even today, there are some good people working there, decent people, honest people. I have some film that they preserved.
Now, you're all familiar, I think, with Apollo 13. That was the aborted mission that was going to the moon to land, and they had an accident on the way. They couldn't land. They damn well barely got back. While they are on the way to the moon, here's the moon, a number of things began happening. Some strange objects were appearing outside the windows of the space station. And guys, they grab their hassle black camera and start taking pictures. This photograph shows three different objects. Here. This looks like a circular object with an enlarged dome on top. This is a smaller object in a circular kind of disc shaped craft. But coming in from the right margin of this particular picture is this. Next picture, please. Here we are. This is a blow-up of the positive in the photograph. And here is a blow-up of the negative right, of this object here. Ladies and gentlemen, this particular object is five miles long. And I'm tempted to use the term On Monday afternoon, Captain Ray Bowyer was piloting a routine passenger flight from Southampton to Alderney, but to his and the passengers' surprise, a strange object became visible on the horizon. You've been a professional pilot for 20 years. You've flown thousands of flights. You're putting your reputation on the line here, so you must truly believe what you saw was, was very real. In my years of experience, I've never seen anything like this. And frankly, uh, I'd be perfectly happy not to ever again. It's a pretty uh, chilling thing. And from my first sighting of it, uh, which was initially 50, uh, maybe around 50 miles away, perhaps 40 miles away from the actual object, it appeared to be fairly small, but it must have been pretty huge. It must have been very, very much larger than I thought it was originally. I told air traffic control that they asked me for a size approximately. I said about the size of a 737, perhaps twice the size. Uh, but in reflection, seeing this object from about 40 miles away, it must have been very, very much bigger than that. Perhaps maybe a mile across, perhaps. Were you scared? I wasn't too happy, put it that way. I was quite glad to get on the ground and have a cup of tea. So this appeared as a solid object. Us using this pad, could you actually draw for me what you sure. saw? Well, um, getting close to it, uh, through the binoculars, I could see a sort of a, a shape very much like this, extremely pointed, very long and thin, and uh, it should be slightly thinner than that, but th this area, about two-thirds of the way along the fuselage, was, was pretty dark. Uh, this was very brilliant yellow, very golden yellow, and very dark in this area. Now what's particularly interesting about this case is that not only did you see it, but your passengers saw it, and indeed radar picked it up. Can you tell me about that? Uh, as I understand it, there was a plot uh, taken on the Jersey radar um, to be a couple of miles south of uh, the Cascades Lighthouse um, and another aircraft also flying in the vicinity uh, from the Isle of Man into Guernsey, I believe, saw a similar sort of thing. Would you mind showing us on, on a chart exactly your course and where you saw these, these, these two UFOs? No problem at all. The position of the, the first one would have been about here, just south of the Casquettes, which is according to radar. And the position of the second one in relation to that one was probably around here somewhere, very close to Guernsey, I would have imagined. Jersey Air Traffic Control confirmed their radar picked up some activity in the area, but say the data can't be taken as evidence of a UFO's presence. September 1967, Steckling himself had a spectacular UFO sighting. In 1967, my father, mother and I were on lecture tour in Germany and we were traveling 
from Mannheim on the train and we witnessed along with the passengers on board this train a armada of what we would call spacecraft or UFOs appearing and disappearing above the train I'd say around 10,000 feet and my father with his 8 millimeter camera filmed the sequence of these craft and as the film rolls you can see the crafts appear and disappear in formation and you can see the motion of the trees moving by as the train is in motion so the craft are behind the trees not in front of it <coughs> and um, it's quite an interesting piece of film uh, it was reported in the newspaper the next day the German newspaper for that particular area on our way back from Schifferstadt to Frankfurt, we were able to film a whole amount of space car flying over, I would say, very clear to the, and very near to the Frankfurt airport. This film and all of Mr. Adamski's film, we took as we returned to Washington, D.C., and my husband wrote letters to NASA, to the Pentagon, and offered them the chance to look upon the films that were available. We got invited to all of the organization, to the Pentagon, we got invited to NASA, and do during the conversation that we held with NASA, we had 22 scientists present. And none of these scientists ridiculed what we had. In fact, they were not even interested in the skull cuffs because they told us the size of it, how they fly, and with what they fly.